request to make one more pass for Operation Insurance Claim. Roger that. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Eric, and today I'm gonna to install another product from Handshow that's really gonna impact those that have long commutes or take road trips. This is something that not gonna be for everyone, but I think it's pretty cool. So this is the latest little gadget that Handshow has sent out to me. Uh, this is gonna be for the Model 3. Uh, they also make one for the Model Y and this is a massage unit for your seats you see it comes with instructions wiring harness this is the controller module this is version three it's got a pry tool and a torque spit to unscrew the one bolt that holds the side trim in i've uh, i've actually got two of these so i can put one in the driver's side and one in the passenger side all right, so what do we mean by massaging seats? Well, as you can see here, we have controls here for a lumbar support. And what this is, is a series of air bladders that basically uh, expand and contract to, uh, you know, stick out for lumbar support. And um, you can move it around and all that with the button on the side, but what if you could just press this in a certain manner to where you use the equipment that's already in the seats to expand and contract fast enough to where it massages your back. Well, that's exactly what Hand Show has done. They have a control module that tells the air bladders to fill with air and release the air, and it moves up your back and then it comes down your back. So I will install this on both the driver and passenger seat and test it out for you and let you know if this is uh, worth your time and effort. The first step is going to be to move both seats all the way to the front as far as they go. You can do that by just pressing this. So some people see control modules and wire harnesses and they kind of freak out and they think they can't do this. I'm gonna show you how easy it actually is. You can do this. So let me go ahead and simplify this for you as far as explaining it. You're gonna have a wire that has three main connections that we're gonna use. One connects to this button, the other end of it to that control module that we will install somewhere underneath the seat. Just, you could either zip tie it or use double-sided tape. Just, you want it just out of the way. And then the other end of the cable is gonna to go to a power source where we are going to tap into our power from behind the USB here and I'll show you how to take this off it just slides off it's really simple there's only one screw to remove in this whole process and it's going to be a t20 uh, torx bit that uh, you need to remove with the provided tool that Hancho sends you all right so we're going to start on the driver's side and it's a little different on the drivers than on the passenger side on the driver's side, the bolt that you would normally unrelease here is going to be obstructed by a support beam that's uh, really difficult to get to. So I'm not going to remove the bolt to pull this trim back. I'm just going to pull the trim here and uh, just try to be careful so I don't break anything because it's just right down here, the cable that I need to unplug from this module here to replace with the new wiring harness that Hancho sends. Now on the, on the passenger side, uh, the bolt is easily reachable and you can use your T20 tool to remove the bolt and this whole thing just comes off, makes it a lot easier. So there is a little bit more effort on the driver's side than on the passenger side. All right, so I've got the seat moved all the way forward now. I'm going to pull back on this area here 
and right here I can see the wire and see if I can pull it out. All right, so right there. You're going to release the clips and pull the wiring out. And uh, I'm gonna do that off camera. I'm probably just gonna feel my way just because I don't wanna totally remove this. It is just held in with some clips. If I pulled hard enough, I could unclip it. I just don't wanna break the driver's side since I'm not removing that bolt on the front. Uh, it'll be much easier on the passenger side. So let's see what I can do with this one first. All right, and this is the cable. So what you're going to do is, first of all, you look at your control module. You see it's got a big white uh, multi-pin connector uh, right here. So you're gonna go on your wiring harness. And you're gonna find where that is. It's gonna be this, this one right here. And now I need to find this guy so I believe it's gonna be the white cable. Yeah. So this one is the male end. You're gonna find the female end. And it looks like it, let's see which way it connects. Like that. And then this end right here is going to connect back into the button. All right, I've got it connected there, right here. And now I'm just gonna take the rest of the wire, feed it down through the bottom of this and just grab it from the, the back here. Just running the wire down underneath this part where I can grab it from the back and pull it through. All right, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, this driver's side is a bit of a pain to get down in there. Uh, just to get to underneath the seat to run this wire through. So what I'm going to do is quick change of plans. I'm going to run it along this and up under this part and around out through here. Just have it tucked in where you can't see it. And then I'll route it under the seat there where it's all hidden and tucked away. But I was thinking I would be able to get to underneath the seat just from here. And you may be able to. I just wasn't able to. I've got fat fingers. I just couldn't get it down in there without prying more of these clips off. And um, I, I still anticipate the passenger side is gonna be 10 times easier. All right, so we are moving into the back seat here. I've got it sticking out through here and I'm going to route the wiring up underneath the chair just to kind of see if I can get it uh, from not hanging out underneath the feet so I can route it out this way and up through here. There are multiple ways you could route this wiring uh, from over here, over to there. But what I thought was the easiest way is this flap here is just held in with some uh, tension springs and rubber straps, like uh, elastic straps, to where I could run the wire from this end here, run it all the way out here and have it come out this end over here and oh, back over here is where you actually connect your control module. And they give you double-sided tape and zip ties or you can put it under the seat. But you know what? When I pull this tight through here, it would sit somewhere in the middle down under here where I may not even need to do that. I may not even have to secure it somewhere and it's not gonna rattle around in there. So I may just play around with that idea uh, for you know a temporary solution, maybe leave it permanent, but uh, I think that's the easiest way to route the wiring. The next step is to pry this piece off under the, the center console, and you just get your pry tool in there, and it's held in with clips. I've already popped mine off, so it's loose. And this, if you remember me installing the um, heads-up display, this is where you tap into the CAN bus system for that. And um, that's where I've got the wiring for that. So you're just popping this cover off, 
off to get to this access point here, and that's where we're going to go to next. Next, we're moving up to this unit here because we're gonna tap into the power behind these USB ports. The way you do this, this is all just kind of held in with pressure. There's no bolts to unbolt or anything. You just kind of grab it right along the sides here and pull straight back. You may wiggle it, but that's it. So this comes off and it's only held in by this wire right here. This is what gives the power to those USB ports. So I will go ahead and let's see, best way to show you guys. You could use a flat head, like something small, just kind of wedge it in there and just kind of twist it slightly. And now it'll just come out easier. The next step is to run your wiring up through here so we can tap into this power source here. Um, the easiest way to do it, I mean, you could try fishing something up through there, but the easiest way is this is actually held in with clips, this bottom lower portion here. If you add a little pressure and pull on it, this comes down like this. Now it's a lot easier to route this cabling up through the bottom and out the top here. So let me go ahead and get situated and do that. So something that is a little different about my installation than maybe some of the other YouTube channels you've seen that are installing this is I am installing two units. I've got one on the passenger side and the driver side. So while I've got all this opened up here, I just ran the wiring for the passenger side through the little flap underneath the uh, passenger seat and out the other side. And I'm going to pull this one up through the bottom here as well so I can daisy chain these together. So this is the OEM cable here. So this is really all the length you need in the wiring just to get to the USB ports and Handshow gives you a ton of wiring. So I just zip tied this together so I can kind of keep it tucked away underneath here and it'll be out of the way. I'm gonna do the same with the passenger side and uh, then we'll daisy chain these together. I'll show you how to do that. And to daisy chain these together, it's super easy. So what you've got is you've got male ends and female ends of these connectors. The OEM one is a male end. So you're gonna go into a female end of one of these hand show connectors here, connect it like that. And now once you plug the male end to the USB port, that will make the power travel through the OEM wiring through this loom and out this end here. But we're adding a second one. So we're gonna daisy chain it by plugging this male one into the driver side cable female uh, wiring loom like that. And now we've got a male end here that we can connect to our USB port here. So this is where our USB ports are right there. Here's the back, you can see the circuit board. Um, this is all the electronics that are involved there and all that power and data are going through this port right here. So we're gonna plug in our hand show cable into that. And we're good to go with that part. Now all we need to do is just pop this back on, put the other part in and we're almost done. So this is your air vent right here. We're gonna make sure we don't obstruct this in any way. The, the wiring can go actually underneath. It'll fit all in there. Now all we need to do is replace the little panel there that covers that up and we're done back here. 
All right, so I've got this popped back on and all you really see is this part of the cable that I've got just tucked underneath between the carpet and this panel, just so it's flush along the top here. Um, and I think that's just the best and easiest way to do it, but you can make it work however you see fit. All right, now I'm gonna start on the passenger seat. Now this is a little different because we'll, we'll be able to reach this bolt under the seat with our Torx bit. Okay, so I've been using my tool to undo this bolt. It's right here. You really just have to feel your way there. You can try looking at it, but it's it's really at a weird angle. And I didn't film most of, most of the time of me trying to turn it with this because let's be honest, no matter where I put the camera, you're either gonna see bald head or butt crack and neither one's a good look. So I've got it loosened to where I can unfinish or unscrew the rest of it with my fingers. And there we are. So it's just a little bolt there that holds it in a little screw. And now this part comes loose. All right. I've got it plugged in there. Got that there. Let me take the module. Move it to the back here. And now I'm back in the back seat again. I'm gonna take the white connector and it is going to go into the module like this. Okay. You can hear the motors of the uh, lumbar support. And like I said, now I can just tuck this underneath this fabric here and it's out of the way and secure. All right, so I've got it all connected. Let me test it by pressing the down button on the lumbar support uh, two times real quick. So you hear the three beeps that tells you that it's activated. I can feel it moving up my back right now. Let's see what it does. All right, so I have the unit working right now and holy shiatsu, I'm just kidding. It doesn't feel like one of those back massagers like you're probably used to where it has the quick vibrations that kind of pounds on your back. All it really is is it's filling up the air bladder with air and then it releases it real quick and then it fills it up again and then it releases it real quick and it kind of goes down and then up but it's really a slow buildup to where it fills up with air. So it's not like it's really pulsating on your back. It's just kind of doing the slow kind of maneuver like that to kind of just not get you tired while you're driving, I guess. It feels pretty good. Um, it is kind of a weird sensation though. Uh, it, uh, yeah, it, it goes from your lower back to about mid back and it's, uh, you can hear the air releasing real quick. Uh, but yeah, it's that's a really all it is, is it fills up with air pretty quickly, but even quicker, it releases the air. So it gives you that sensation of a someone pushing on you and then pulling back and pushing and then pulling back. It's pretty nice. So as far as the functionality goes, to turn it on, you tap down twice within like a three second period. And then if you want to turn it off, you just press down for about a half second and that'll disable it. So what are my thoughts about this? I think it's a cool thing, but it's not going to be for everyone. It's not just so mind blowing that you're going to say, I got to have this right now. But if you are one of those people like myself who has a long commute to work, then this might be something that you will be interested in. This will also come in real handy for those of you that like to take long road trips. It just helps with the fatigue of driving and just sitting in the car for long periods of time. It's really like someone just kind of pushing on your back and then letting off and then pushing on their back in another spot and letting off. Um, it's not a rapid massager that you're used to. It's just the air bladder that's already built into the car, filling with air and then releasing. 
So just a few thoughts about the install process is that the driver's side is much more difficult than the passenger side and it's only because of that side panel just doesn't want to come loose to give you enough room to get your fingers down there to undo the wiring harness. Other than that though, I, I thought it was easier to route the wire kind of over the seat belt area instead of dropping it underneath the seat around where the floorboard is. Um, I've seen some people do that too. If you're able to do that, then great. I just thought it was easier to do it this way. So if you're interested in buying the massaging seat unit, I'll put links in the description below. Use coupon code because Tesla to save 15% off your order. And I just want to take this time to say a big thank you to everyone who's subscribed to the channel. We just hit 5,000 subscribers. I can't believe it guys. You are the best. I just want to say thank you to all of you who have bought t-shirts from the links below. I really appreciate that. Also, thank you to people that have helped me out on Patreon and through PayPal. You guys are amazing. The channel appreciates you. I appreciate you. And if you like this video, let me know by hitting that like button. If you want to see more, consider subscribing and I'll see you guys real soon. Bye.